section sixteen of drake by alfred noyes this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by cynthia moyer book eleven part one few minutes and well wasted those were spent on that great game of bowls for well knew drake what panic threatened plymouth since his fleet lay trapped there by the black head-wind that blew straight up the sound and plymouth town itself except the ships one seaward ere the dawn lay at the armada's mercy never a seaman of all the sea-dogs clustered on the quays and all the captains clamouring round lord howard hoped that one ship might win to the open sea at dawn they thought the armada's rolling guns to windward in an hour must shatter them huddled in their red slaughter-house like sheep now was the great sun sunken and the night dark far to westward like the soul of man fighting blind nature a wild flare of red upon some windy headland suddenly leapt and vanished flickering into the clouds again it leapt and vanished then all at once it streamed steadily as a crimson torch upheld by titan hands to heaven it was the first beacon a sudden silence swept along the seething quays and in their midst appeared drake then the jubilant thunder of his voice rolled buffeting the sea wind far and nigh and ere they knew what power as of a sea surged through them his immortal battleship revenge had flung out cables to the quays and while the seamen as he had commanded knotted thick ropes together he stood apart for well he knew what panic threatened still whittling idly at a scrap of wood and carved a little boat out for the child of some old sea companion so great and calm a master of the world seemed drake that as he whittled and the chips fluttered into the blackness over the quay men said that in this hour of england's need each tiny flake turned to a battleship for now began the lanthorns one by one to glitter and half reveal the shadowy hulks before him so the huge old legend grew not all unworthy the homeric age of gods and godlike men saint michael's mount answering the first wild beacon far away rolled crimson thunders to the stormy sky the ropes were knotted through the panting dark great heaving lines of seamen all together hauled with a shout and all together again hauled with a shout against the roaring wind and slowly slowly onward towards the sea moved the revenge and seaward ever heaved the brawny backs together and in their midst suddenly as they slackened drake was there hauling like any ten and with his heart doubling the strength of all giving them joy of battle against those odds ay till they found delight in the burning tingle of the blood that even their hardy hands must feel besmear the harsh rough straining ropes there as they toiled answering a score of hills old beachy head streamed like a furnace to the rolling clouds then all around the coast each windy ness and craggy mountain kindled peak from peak caught the tremendous fire and passed it on round the bluff east and the black mouth of thames up northward to the waste wild yorkshire fells and gloomy cumberland where like a giant 
great skiddaw grasped the red tempestuous brand and thrust it up against the reeling heavens then all night long inland the wandering winds ran wild with clamour and clash of startled bells all night the cities seethed with torches flashed with twenty thousand flames of burnished steel while over the trample and thunder of hooves blazed forth the lightning of wild trumpets lonely lanes of country darkness lit by cottage doors entwined with rose and honeysuckle roared like mountain torrents now east west and south as to the coasts with pike and musket streamed the trained bands horse and foot from every town and every hamlet all the shaggy hills from milford haven to the downs of kent and up to humber gleamed with many a hedge of pikes between the beacon's crimson glares while in red london forty thousand men in case the invader should prevail drew swords around their queen all night in dark st paul's while round it rolled a multitudinous roar as of the atlantic on a western beach and all the leaning london streets were lit with fury of torches rose the passionate prayer of england's peril o lord god of hosts let thine enemies know that thou hast taken england into thine hands the mighty sound rolled billowing round the kneeling isles then died echoing up the heights a voice far off as on the cross of calvary caught it up and poured the prayer o'er that deep hush alone we beseech thee o god to go before our armies bless and prosper them both by land and sea grant unto them thy victory o god as thou used to do to thy children when they please thee all power all strength all victory come from thee then from the lips of all those thousands burst a sound as from the rent heart of an ocean one tumult one great rushing storm of wings cleaving the darkness round the gates of heaven some put their trust in chariots and some in horses but we will remember thy name o lord our god so while at plymouth sound her seamen toiled all through the night and scarce a ship had one seaward the heart of england cried to god all night while trumpets yelled and blared without and signal cannon shook the blazoned panes and billowing multitudes went thundering by amid that solemn pillared hush arose from lips of kneeling thousands one great prayer storming the gates of heaven o lord our god heavenly father have mercy upon our queen to whom thy far dispersed flock do fly in the anguish of their souls behold behold how many princes band themselves against her how long thy servant hath laboured to them for peace how proudly they prepare themselves for battle arise therefore maintain thine own cause judge thou between her and her enemies she seeketh not her own honour but thine not the dominions of others but thy truth not bloodshed but the saving of the afflicted o rend the heavens therefore and come down deliver thy people to vanquish is all one with thee by few or many ward or wealth weakness or strength the cause is thine the enemies thine the afflicted thine the honour victory and triumph thine grant her people now one heart 
one mind, one strength, give unto her counsels and her captains wisdom and courage strongly to withstand the forces of her enemies, that the fame and glory of thy kingdom may be spread unto the ends of the world. Father, we crave this in thy mercy for the precious death of thy dear Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as the dreadful dawn through mist wreaths broke, and out of Plymouth sound at last, with cheers ringing from many a thousand throats, there struggled six little ships, all that the night's long toil had warped down to the sea, but leading them the ship of Drake. There rose one ocean cry from all those worshippers, Let God arise, and let his enemies be scattered. Under the leaden fogs of that new dawn, empty and cold, indifferent as death, the sea heaved strangely to the seamen's eyes, seeing all round them only the leaden surge, wrapped in wet mists, or flashing here and there with crumbling white, against the cold wet wind, westward the little ships of England beat with short tacks close in shore, striving to win the windward station of the threatening battle that neared behind the veil. Six little ships, no more, beat westward, even as all mankind beats up against that universal wind whereon, like withered leaves, all else is blown down one wide way to death. The soul alone, whether at last it wins or faints and fails, stems the dark tide with its intrepid sails. Close hauled with many a short tack, struggled and strained, northwest, southwest, the ships, but ever westward gained some little way with every tack, and soon, while the prows plunged beneath the grey-gold noon, lapped by the crackling waves, even as the wind died down a little, in the mists behind stole out from Plymouth Sound the struggling score of ships that might not win last night to sea. They followed, but the six went on before, not knowing alone for God and liberty. Now as they tacked northwest, the sullen roar of reefs crept out, or some strange tinkling sound of sheep upon the hills. Southwest once more the boatswain's whistle swung their bowsprits round. Southwest, until the long, low, lapping splash was all they heard of keels that still ran out seaward, then with one muffled heave and crash, once more the whistles brought their sails about. And now the noon began to wane, the west, with slow rich colours, filled, and shadowy forms, dark curdling wreaths, and fogs with crimsoned breast, and tangled zones of dusk like frozen storms, motionless, flagged with sunset, hulled with doom, motionless, nay, across the darkening deep, surely the whole sky moved its gorgeous gloom onward, and like the curtains of a sleep, the red fogs crumbled, mists dissolved away. There, like death's secret dawning through a dream, great thrones of thunder dusked the dying day, and higher pale towers of cloud began to gleam. There, in one heaven-wide storm great masts and clouds of sail crept slowly forth the ships of spain from north to south their tangled spars and shrouds controlled the slow wind as with bit and rain onward they rode in insolent disdain sighting the little fleet of england there while o'er the sullen splendour of the main 
three solemn guns told all their host to prayer and their great ensign blazoned all the doom fraught air the sacred standard of their proud crusade up to the masthead of their flagship soared on one side knelt the holy mother maid on one the crucified redeemer poured his blood and all their kneeling hosts adored their saints and clouds of incense heavenward streamed while pomp of cannonry and pike and sword down long sea lanes of mocking menace gleamed and chant of priests rolled out o'er seas that darkly dreamed who comes to fight for england is it ye six little straws that dance upon the foam i sweeping o'er the sunset crimsoned sea let the proud pageant in its glory come leaving the sunset like a hecatomb of souls whose bodies yet endure the chain let slaves by thousands branded scarred and dumb in those dark galleys grip their oars again and o'er the rolling deep bring on the pomp of spain bring on the pomp of royal paladins for all the princedoms of the land are there and for the gorgeous purple of their sins the papal pomp bring on with psalm and prayer nearer the splendour heaves can ye not hear the rushing foam not see the blazoned arms and black-faced hosts through leagues of golden air crowding the decks muttering their beads and charms to where in furthest heaven they thicken like locust swarms bring on the pomp and pride of old castile blazon the skies with royal aragon beneath oquendo let old ocean reel the purple pomp of priestly rome bring on and let her censers dusk the dying sun the thunder of her banners on the breeze following sidonia's glorious galleon deride the sleeping thunder of the seas while twenty thousand warriors chant her litanies lo all their decks are kneeling sky to sky responds it is their solemn evening hour salve regina though the daylight die salve regina though the darkness lower have they not still the kingdom and the power salve regina hark their thousands cry from where like clouds to where like mountains tower their crowded galleons looming far or nigh salve regina hark what distant seas reply what distant seas what distant ages here bring on the pomp the sun of spain goes down the moon but swells the tide of praise and prayer bring on the world-wide pomp of her renown let darkness crown her with a starrier crown and let her watch the fierce waves crouch and fawn round those huge hulks from which her cannon frown while close in shore the wet sea mists are drawn round england's drake then wait in triumph for the dawn the sun of rome goes down the night is dark still are her thousands praying still their cry ascends from the wide waste of waters hark ave maria darker grows the sky ave maria those about to die salute thee nay what wandering winds blaspheme with random gusts of chilling prophecy against the solemn sounds that heavenward stream the night is come at last break not the splendid dream but through the misty darkness close in shore northwest southwest and ever westward strained the little ships of england all night long as down the coast the reddening beacons leapt 
the crackle and lapping splash of tacking keels the boatswain's low sharp whistles and the whine of ropes mixing with many a sea-bird's cry disturbed the darkness waking vague swift fears among the mighty hulks of spain that lay nearest then fading through the mists in shore northwest then growing again but farther down their ranks to westward with each dark return and dark departure till the rearmost rank of grim sea castles heard the swish and creak pass plashing seaward through the wet sea mists to windward now of all that monstrous host then heard no more than wandering sea-birds cries wheeling around their leagues of lanthorn light or heave of waters waiting for the dawn dawn everlasting and almighty dawn rolled o'er the waters the grey mists were fled see in their reeking heaven-wide crescent drawn those masts and spars and cloudy sails outspread like one great sulphurous tempest soaked with red in vain withstand the march of brightening skies the dawn sweeps onward and the night is dead and lo to windward what bright menace lies what glory kindles now in england's wakening eyes there on the glittering plains of open sea to windward now behind the fleets of spain two little files of ships are tossing free free of the winds and of the wind-swept main were they not trapped who brought them forth again free of the great new fields of england's war with sails like blossoms shining after rain and guns that sparkle to the morning star drake first upon the deep that rolls to trafalgar and spain knows well that flag of fiery fame spain knows who leads those files across the sea implacable invincible his name el drake creeps hissing through her ranks to lee but now she holds the rolling heavens in fee his ships are few they surge across the foam the hunt is up but need the mountains flee or fear the snarling wolf-pack let them come they crouch but dare not leap upon the flanks of rome nearer they come and nearer nay prepare close your huge ranks that sweep from sky to sky madness itself would shrink but drake will dare eternal hell let the great signal fly close up your ranks el drake comes down to die el drake is brave the vast sea cities loom through heaven spain spares one smile of chivalry one wintry smile across her cannon's gloom as that frail fleet full sail comes rushing towards its doom end of book eleven part one